this is an extraordinary situation due to the fact that uh, he is the man who, while still a serving politician, uh, spread the lies of that absurd fantasist, Carl Beach, who told the police ridiculous stories about a VIP paedophile ring involving... Uh, former Prime Minister Edward Heath, allegedly, of course, uh, former Home Secretary Leon Britton, uh, former head of our armed for, for, uh, forces Lord Bramwell, uh, 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 accusing them all of this awful crimes against young boys being murdered and God knows what. Uh, now, Tom Watson lobbied the police to investigate. They launched an investigation. And one of the... And it's no exaggeration to say that all the victims of these uh, this absurd web of deceit, these lies they had their lives ruined uh, none more than our next guest who was uh, alleged to be involved in this ridiculous nonsensical uh, VIP paedophile ring uh, and that is the former Conservative MP uh, Harvey Proctor uh, thank you very much for joining us Harvey Good evening to you, thank you for the invitation and giving me the, uh, the opportunity to comment um, well, thank you for joining us. But you saw that you get the gist of what I'm saying. I mean, what do you feel about the fact that Tom Watson, the man who spread Carl Beach's lies uh, and effectively uh, destroyed your life, made a life hell uh, for Lord Bramall and his poor wife who was suffering from dementia, uh, Lady Britain, Leon. Britain's uh, widow uh, still suffers due to this and uh, the Labour leader proposes uh, Tom Watson to become a Lord and it is accepted. What the hell is going on, Harvey? I think I'm the only surviving victim of Mr Beach and the Metropolitan Police. He, Tom Watson, when he was deputy uh, leader of the Labour Party, or I think just before, he used this as a way of promoting himself within the Labour Party and within politics generally, quite wrongly. He invited Mr Beach into the House of Commons, uh, talked to him to such an extent that Mr Beach said that Tom Watson was part of his team. He then, believing Mr. Beach went on to put extraordinary pressures on the Metropolitan Police and the Operation Midland, which um, followed wrongly uh, Carl Beach's uh, absurd comments, uh, allegations. It put pressure on to such an extent that uh, Detective Inspector, Chief Inspector Dana Tudway, who was head of Operation Midland's investigation, said as one of her priorities, how shall we deal with the pressure from Tom Watson? So Tom Watson tried to act as a glorified police officer at just about the same time when the Metropolitan Police were trying to act not as police, but as politicians. The whole thing was a PR charade, but Tom Watson played an integral role in it. It is therefore extraordinary that having been turned down for a peerage um, two or three years ago, Keir Starmer agrees to promote him to the peerage now. Of course, you have to remember that Keir Starmer as Director General of the Director of Public Prosecutions, he was the one who invented the believe the victim policy, which the Metropolitan Police took up and ran with, particularly with uh, Mr. Beach, turning on its head the British historical uh, view that you are innocent until proved guilty. So when the allegations were made against me, when my house was searched illegally for 15 hours by 20 officers of the Metropolitan Police, I felt that I had already been found guilty and I had to prove my innocence. That's not the way that British justice should work. 
Absolutely, and uh, of course, ludicrously, when you said that the, the you know the police should believe all victims, I mean that excluded what police should be, and that is professionally sceptical about everything. Mm. So it, it el eliminated police scepticism, really absurd, and that led to the absurdity of Operation Midland. Uh, but uh, you just mentioned about the police swarming into your house, searching it, no doubt taking a lot of your private items. I know they always take computers, that sort of thing. But just try to sum up, if you can, Harvey, uh, subsequent to that, the effect that the, this and these allegations had on your life? Well, at that time, I lost my job. My house went with my job. I lost my repute. I felt, at the time, I'd lost everything. And subsequently, take, take your time. through my own hand, I thought I would lose my life so it had a very dramatic sorry to get emotional no, no, uh, of course I, not. I, no I, I um i thought that life had come to an end when i was innocent of all these charges i think it is difficult for people to understand the effect of being accused of murder and particularly of murder of children and of murder of three children, the impact that has on oneself and one's friends and one's life. It is devastating. Well, absolutely, and uh, don't worry at all about getting emotional. Uh, I absolutely understand. I've always uh, felt, you know, in ex incredible sympathy for you and all the other victims of the lies, the absurd lies that were spread. They were given uh, a, a kind of legitimacy. A va they were validated because a senior politician like Tom Watson pursued them, and now. He's been made a lord. He's been honoured by being uh, ennobled. Uh, Keir Starmer has been accused, uh, quite rightly in my view, of bringing shame on the House of Lords by backing Tom Watson's peerage, in fact, proposing him. Uh, again, try to sum up what you feel that subsequent to your ordeal, which clearly continues to this day, that the man responsible for much of your ordeal is now honoured by being made a lord. I am sickened by the fact that police and politicians connected with Operation Midland have not been held to account. They have been promoted, enriched, ennobled. I continue now, not for myself, but to make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else and to try to ensure that at least one Metropolitan Police officer is held personally responsible for what happened. And I continue that fight. There is an ongoing um, investigation by the IOPC into my uh, complaints about the Met on these matters. Uh, I, hope, I hope soon, perhaps before Christmas, that that will be resolved. What I have found is that the IOPC, the Independent Office of Police Conduct, always seemed to side with the police, not with the person who has suffered at the hands of the police. And so I believe the IOPC should be reformed. Indeed, I've called for a Royal Commission on policing in this, in this country because I think the police have lost its way in a woke world mm. and they need to come back to be not a police service a la social services but a police force which they used to be so a, a, a royal commission there hasn't been one on the police for 60 or 70 years is really required now to get to the bottom of the metropolitan police's problems 
Why did they believe the allegations against, well, against all of uh, the people that were accused? But why did they believe them against you? I mean, there was nothing in your life to suggest uh, that you were a paedophile, that you were a murderer, you were a respectable member of the community, you were a Conservative MP. Why did they believe Carl Beach? Uh, who knows? You'd have to put the question to them and they refused to answer. My suspicion is that they knew that I was a homosexual. They knew that in 1987, through a scandal, through um, me pleading guilty to three or four charges of gross indecency at the time, all concerning the age of consent, all of which are now um, uh, not on the statute book, so that those charges should be and are wiped away, because uh, of the age of consent has dropped, they believed they could take advantage of the fact that I was a homosexual. And that is what they did, and what Mr. Beach did, and what Tom Watson took advantage of, aided and abetted by Keir Starmer. But do you think, do you feel, Harvey, also that uh, the police made that in ignorant conflation between being gay and being a paedophile? Uh, the two are not connected, uh, but people uh, who are ignorant of these affairs uh, do tend or can make that uh, connection. Uh, Vladimir Putin's rather keen on that. Uh, do you think that was going on? Yes, when I held my press conference in August 2015 to try to put pressure on the Metropolitan Police <coughs> Uh, to look more closely at these matters and for the media generally to take more interest in, the, in these matters, which they did, I declared, and I have to say it was a difficult statement to make because in the parlance of this world, I was not out. I did not go on the media to talk about my sexuality. I thought it had nothing to do with whether I was a good or bad member of Parliament. But I said at that press conference, I'm a homosexual. I'm not a paedophile. I'm not a murderer. And that comment has stuck the test of time. And I've been proved innocent of all these matters. But it is, it has had an effect. <clears throat> I've said, <clears throat> that I will think about these matters till the day I die, and I will. And it is horrendous to have to live with that, and it's a completely needless pressure brought upon by the likes of the Metropolitan Police, Tom Watson and Sir Keir Starmer. And when Tom Watson says he's apologised, he made weasel words apology to Lady Britain. He couldn't apologize to Lord Britain because he died and shortly afterwards went into the media and attacked him for being a, a terrible person, using, as it turns out, the actual words of Carl Beach. Has, um, he, has he apologized to you regard, personally, Harvey? And with regard, yes, I'm coming to that. Mm. He goes into the media and says he has apologized. He has not apologized to me Jeez. in writing or verbally. So he's lied to the media too. So do you want liars in the House of Lords? I don't, but it's a matter for your viewers to consider. If I, would, if I were Tom Watson, out of no other reason other than a feeling of guilt and shame, I would hand back my peerage. Uh, last question, Harvey. Thank you so much uh, for talking to us. Uh, um... I mean, ha I mean, obviously, you're still completely traumatised by what ha what has happened, and quite understandably so. But how how are you now? I mean, are, are you you know managing to get by? How is life? Thank, thank you. I am much better, and through a strange um, story and tale too long to go into here, but another time perhaps, 
I am now living back in the house, this house you see behind me, mm -hmm. um, that I was thrown out of effectively by the Metropolitan Police in 2015. And I now have my job back at Beaver Castle. And in fact, the reason why I'm, uh, shall we say, dolled up is because I'm going out. <laughs> I was going to say, you're looking very smart. <laughs> help organise a dinner for the Duke and Duchess and their family this evening. Harvey, it's been a privilege to talk to you. Uh, enjoy the night and thank you so much uh, for uh, talking to us. Uh, excellent stuff. Thank you very much. Harvey Proctor, former Tory MP. I mean, that's extraordinary, isn't it, Ali? Incredible. It does, it, we kind of lived a, a precursor to this. Keir Starmer was the man as DPP who pursued about 50 journalists, uh, had them arrested, charged, taken to court, and every mm. single one of them was found innocent. Yeah, I mean, and this this came out of a, the press campaign, which, of course, Tom Watson was at the forefront of. And whether that gave him this feeling of power, the omnipotence that pushed him to do something like this, I don't know, but... I mean, look at that. Look at this, you know... The guy's broken. Yeah. He's broken, yeah. yeah and he's I not apologised It's to great him. to hear that he's, you know at least rebuilt some mm. of his life and he's got his job back and he's got his house back which or both of which he lost and he's obviously going out for a nice oh night tom watson and his hacked off people the, the central plank of their, their their campaign was press apologies must be proportionate you want to talk about proportionate apologies yeah. get on the phone to harvey proctor yeah and if you're, if you're watching tom uh, i think you owe harvey proctor an apology yeah? at least give him a ring say sorry eh?